for now, let's um, let's continue our conversation about um, extreme values. So last time we did what kind of extreme values? Do you guys remember? Absolute maximum to minimums, right? Um, so now let's take a look at finding local maximums and minimums. Okay, um, so let's write down a couple of things just to uh, kind of make sure that we're all on, on the same page here. Um, so to find the absolute extrema, so uh, what are what were the steps that we did? Do you guys remember? Okay, so find the critical points. Good. After that, what do we do? Uh, what about the endpoints? Yeah, we do do something with the endpoints, but what what exactly do we do with them? Plug them into the original function, right? Okay. So, right. So you plug in critical points and endpoints, and this is really important, into the original function. Now, why is it that we plug it into the original function? What are we looking for when we, when we do that? Uh, right, we're looking for the largest value of the function, and when we say <coughs> the value of the function, graphically, we're, we're talking about the y value of the function, right? So, um, since we're looking for the value of the function, then we're going to plug it into the, the original function that we're given, right? Does that make sense? Yeah? You with me? Okay, so, um, so we plug it into the original and compare the y values. And then we choose the largest and the smallest, right? And obviously, the largest is the absolute max, the smallest is the absolute min, right? Okay, so that's what we did last time. Um, and <coughs> so um, the reason why I mention it is because it's very common to mix up um, the different techniques that you use. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at what's called the first derivative test for finding local maximums and minimums. And it has a lot of similarities, but then it's also um, quite a bit different. So you have to be careful not to mix them up. That's a, a very common mistake. So, um, so let me do this. So, uh, so the first derivative test, and this is for finding, not for finding absolute, this is for finding local, or also they're also called uh, relative, relative um, extrema. And what does extrema mean again? Maximums or minimums. So it's both in, in one word. Okay. Um, all right. So a uh, couple of preliminaries here, just to make sure that it makes sense. Um, so if the derivative is positive, then what can I say about the original function? It's increasing, right? Okay, so it's important. It is increasing. Okay, if the derivative is negative, then f of x is, okay, good. All right, now, um, and then also recall the types of critical points. So what are critical points again? So where the derivative is zero, 
or the derivative does not exist. So we won't go through all of them again, but um, what is the derivative equaling to zero? What does that mean graphically? What does it look like? Horizontal tangent, right? So it's a flat spot. Now, at every flat spot, do you always have a maximum or minimum? Not always, right? So it, sometimes it is, but sometimes it isn't, right? Okay, now, what is the derivative um, not existing? What does that look like graphically? So when you find, oh, the derivative doesn't exist, what does that look like when you graph it? There's a bunch of different stuff, right? So it could be a vertical asymptote, right? VA for short. It could be uh, discontinuity. It could be, what are some of the other ones? It could be a cusp, right? Is a cusp a max or a min? It is, right? Okay. Is a vertical asymptote a max or a min? No, right? Because it's an asymptote, so, okay. Um, what else can it be besides a cusp and those other? It could be a spike, right? Is a spike a max or a min? Could be, right? It's possible, okay. Um, and there's the vertical, the other one, vertical tangent. Is that a max or a min? When you have a vertical tangent line? No. That's not a max or a min, right? Okay, so then the way that you kind of want to think of critical points is that they might be maximums or minimums. So they're not guaranteed, but they're points where you want to look for maximums or minimums. Does that make sense? Okay, um, so... Um, all right, so any questions about any of those preliminaries? So those are just kind of things we have already talked about, but they're important for the first derivative test um, that we're going to write down right now. No? We're good? Okay, so let's write it down, the first derivative test then. Um, so... Test. Okay, so suppose... Uh, you find a critical point. So x equals c is a critical point. Um, and another thing that is critical, f must be continuous at C. Okay, so this uh, point uh, must actually exist. So like for example, if I have a vertical asymptote, um, <coughs> is the function continuous there? No. If, it, if I have a jump, discontinuity, no, right? Um, if I have a spike, that is continuous, right? So the derivative doesn't exist at a spike or a cusp, but the function is continuous. Does that make sense? Okay, so we have to make sure that it's continuous at the critical point. <laughs> Um, so this is the test. Uh, if uh, the derivative goes from uh, positive to negative around C, then the point C f of C is a local what? It would be a local maximum. So why is that? So put, put the different, put the pieces together that we've uh, talked about. If the derivative is positive, what does that mean about the function? That means it's increasing, right? So it's going up. If it's negative, then what does that mean? decreasing right and the so in between there is the critical point where it's either flat or a spike or some kind of discontinuity but what did we just say we said that it's continuous there right so if it's not continuous then we don't consider this for a local max or min um, but if it is continuous there then 
if it goes from positive to negative, if the derivative goes from positive to negative, then it would be a local max. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it would look like, basically it would look like either like this, or maybe like this, or maybe like this, right? Does that make sense? Okay, uh, and then same thing, but now the derivative goes from negative to positive around C. Then the point CF of C is a local minimum. Why? Because, well, now it'll look like this or like this or like that, right? Does that make sense? Okay. Now, this seems simple, uh, and it actually is simple. The problem, what's difficult is not actually the test or memorizing the test or knowing what to do. The problem is that all the different kinds of functions that you get, they can be tricky. Um, because to find the critical points, you need to set it, the derivative equal to zero and solve it. And then you need to be really careful that you don't confuse yourself with which function do I plug it in, what am I looking for, that kind of stuff. So, um, all right, so let's do an example. Uh, let's start off with a simple one. So um, polynomials are for sure the easiest kind. So if you remember uh, when you took pre-calculus, you studied polynomials a little bit. And you did some stuff, like you found the uh, intercepts, right? Uh, but there was one thing that you, you couldn't find. Because you found the end behavior, right? You did stuff like that. You found, um, what else did you find? The zeros, the intercepts, end behavior. But then what, was, what could you not find with the tools you had at your disposal? For example, this one, how many uh, humps does it have? Probably two, right? Because remember, you learned that it was one less than the degree is the maximum number of turning points. Um, did you know why back then? No, right? It was just something that you memorized. Um, but were you able to find exactly where they were without a graphing calculator? No, right? You never could. Okay. Well, can you with calculus? <laughs> I'm sure you can, right? That's exactly what we're doing. So, um, so if let's say we're going to find the local extrema here, um, what's the first thing that we would do? Derivative. Take the derivative, right? So uh, here in the first derivative test, we need to basically find the, the critical points first, right? Uh, so to find the critical points, we need to find the derivative. So let's do that. So what is that? 6x squared. OK. All right, looks good. And then what do I do with that? Yeah, set it equal to 0, right? So set 6x squared minus 6x minus 36 equal to 0. Uh, let's see. Factor out of 6, right? x minus 3, and then x plus 2. Okay, so then, um, so this tells me that at x equals 3 and x equals minus 2, uh, what are those guys called? Those are my critical points, right? And in this case, what kind of critical points are they? It's where the derivative equals zero, which means graphically it's going to be a flat spot, right? Okay, so uh, you can just make a little note there, so you know, just for yourself, flat spot. Okay, now, uh, what's the second thing that we want to do? After we do that, uh, we want to actually do the, the derivative, the first derivative test. So typically what you do, so apply FDT, first derivative test. Okay, so uh, what you want to do is you want to make a number line. And you want to put on the number line your critical points. So here's minus 2, and here's 3. 
So minus 2 and 3, those are my critical points. And to do the first derivative test, we basically need to know what sign is the derivative around the critical points, right? So then how do I do that? Just plug in, yeah, plug in a test point. So you're going to uh, pick a test point uh, in this interval, this interval, and then that interval. So all three, in this case, there's three. So what would be a good choice? What's a good test point? Uh, a number less than minus two. Which one? Minus three, okay, sure. What about between minus two and three? <coughs> Zero, and then? Four. Okay, now, what am I going to plug these into? Okay, so that's why I said that you have to be careful, right? Because I heard the original, and then I heard the derivative. So you have to make sure that you are careful. Ask yourself, because in a little bit we're going to throw in the second derivative too. So you need to ask yourself, okay, what is it that I'm actually looking for here? Why is it that I'm plugging in these numbers? Well, the first derivative test tells me if f prime goes from positive to negative, right? If f prime goes from negative to positive, I'm going to plug them into the derivative because I'm looking for whether the function is increasing or decreasing, right? Does that make sense? So because we're looking for whether the function is increasing or decreasing, that's why I'm going to plug it into the first derivative because that's the one that tells me whether it's increasing or decreasing. Does that make sense? Compared to with the absolute maximum and min, what were we looking for then? We were looking for the value of the function, right? So that's why we plugged it into the original function. Yeah? Okay. All right. So... And all you care about here is not really the value. You care about the sign. And here it's pretty easy to see already uh, because it's in factored form. And so if I plug in minus 3, um, I get 6 times, what is that, minus 6 times minus 1, right? And what is that? Is that positive or negative? This is going to be positive, right? Okay, so this is positive less than minus 2, right? So what does that tell me about the function? It's increasing. So what you can do is you can put a little, I like to put a line like that, meaning that it's increasing, like that. Okay, and then if I plug in 0, what do I get? It's going to be a negative number, right? So that means that it's decreasing, right? So what did I just find right there without even going further? So let me go over here. So it's a little bit in the wrong direction, I guess. But um, So this tells me that there is a local, in this case max, right? at x equals minus 2 what's the y value there I would have to plug it into the original function in that case right if I wanted to find the y value um, okay so we'll leave that there we'll, we'll do that in a minute let's finish the first derivative test uh, so here if I plug in 4 I get 6 times 1 times 6 right and that's going to be positive. So that tells me that it's increasing, right? So what does that mean about uh, 3? There's a local minimum at x equals 3. So does that make sense? Any questions with that? Does the idea make sense? Okay, I'll take silence for yes, crystal clear. Uh, what's the y value? Does anybody find this? If I do 2 times minus 2 cubed, minus 3 times minus 2 squared, minus 36 times minus 2, 
plus 5. What is that? Anyone? Fifty-three. You sure? <laughs> so what is that? Minus sixteen, or minus twelve, minus twenty-eight, minus twenty-three, plus seventy-two. What did you say, Nick? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> 49, yes. <coughs> okay, and then if I plug in 3, that's even bigger. Did anybody punch that into their calculator? Yeah. 32. 32. Okay, so that's the basic... Uh, first derivative test. Um, okay, so any questions about that? Does that make sense? Okay, now um, I'm going to uh, write down. So uh, I tend to prefer using the. Um, first derivative test most of the time. Um, but sometimes the second derivative test is a little bit quicker. But you have to be really careful not to confuse yourself. OK, so the second derivative test, what does the second derivative tell you? It tells you about the concavity. OK, but this is the second derivative test. It's not for concavity. It's for local extremas. So meaning it's you can do you would do either the first derivative test or the second derivative test. You would not do both unless the second derivative test doesn't work, which sometimes it doesn't work. Um, OK, so I'll give it to you and we'll try it out. And then you guys can do whichever one you want whenever you feel like. OK, so this is the test. So um, suppose um, x equals c is a critical. Uh, point and uh, f is continuous. Same thing. So and f is continuous at x equals c. Okay. Um, then if the second derivative at C is positive, then the point C F of C, what would that be? So imagine, so you have um, critical point, second derivative is positive. That means that it's concave what? Up. Up. So what would that be? Minimum. Yeah, it's a local minimum, right? Notice that you no longer have to check if it goes from this sign to this sign, you're just looking at the concavity, and that tells you whether it's a min or max. So if the second derivative at C is negative, well, what would that mean? That means you have a critical point, and then the then it would be a maximum, right? Because it's concave down. So then C F of C is a local max. OK, so let's just quickly do, um, so let's try the second derivative test on the one we just did. So uh, what was that? That was 2x cubed minus 3x squared uh, minus 36x plus 5. OK. All right, so just for, just for fun. Oh, wait. Ooh, sorry. I forgot. C. Because what are we missing? What else could the second derivative be? Zero, right? What if it's so it could be either positive 
could be negative, but it, the second derivative could also be zero. What does that mean? Nope. The SDT is inconclusive. Do the first derivative test. So if you get this, if you're trying the second derivative test and you get the second derivative is zero at a critical point, this means that you don't know. You have to go back and do the first derivative test. Okay, all right. So that's the bad, th that's the only bad thing about the second derivative test. It's a, lo a lot of times it's faster, but if you get zero, then you have to do the first derivative test anyways. Okay, uh, so what, what would be the first thing that you do if we're looking for the, uh, if we're looking for the maximums or minimums, this time using the second derivative test. So the first thing you do is you find the critical points again, right? Now we're not gonna do it again because we just did it, right? Well, let's write down the first derivative because we need it anyways. So 6x squared minus 6x minus 36. Okay, and then what are the critical points? We found x equals... Okay, all right, so we won't redo that whole thing again. Okay, so now, uh, what would be the second step? Get the second derivative, right? So find second derivative and plug in the critical points. All right, so let's do that. So second derivative, uh, what would that be? 12 x minus six. Whoa. 12 x minus six. Okay, now, should I make a number line? No, good answer, correct. No, I should not make a number line. Okay, so what does the second derivative tell me to do? So I'm gonna plug in three, and I'm gonna plug in minus two. Does that make sense? Okay, so if I plug in three, I get 12 times 3 minus 6, positive what? Positive 30. The key thing is the positive there. Uh, what does that mean? So at the critical point, at 3, it's going to be concave up, which means that is a, so I heard both. It's a local, so if it's, uh, a critical point and it's concave up, then it would have to be a local max, right? Concave up, looks like that, doesn't it? Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Just making sure you guys are paying attention, okay. <laughs> That's right. Okay, and then if I plug in minus two, uh, what do I get? Ne negative 30. So that means that <laughs> So that means it's going to be concave down, right? Okay, so it's gonna be a local max. And then y, the y value, uh, I forget, what was it? Uh, 49 for this one and then for the two. Okay, so we got the same thing, right? So min at three, max at minus two, min at three, max at minus two. All right, so questions? Yes? Right, exactly, yeah. Although if, often you need to know the intervals of increase or decrease anyways, so then you end up having to do the first derivative test anyways, so. It just depends, if you're only looking for the local max or, max or mins, um, and the second derivative is 
relatively easy to find, then it, it's maybe a good idea to do it. Otherwise, just stick to the first derivative step. Most of the time. Um, the reason why it starts getting confusing is then often you need to know, okay, well, on what intervals is it con concave up or concave down? What are the inflection points? So then you would use the second derivative, but then you're looking for concavity, but then you also have the second derivative, which you sometimes use to find the local maximums or minimums, and so then everything kind of starts getting jumbled in your head. And then that's, that's when it starts getting a bit more difficult. But, um, so a second derivative test shows a reaffirm of return on the first, correct? Correct, yes. So you would not typically do both. You would only do one or the other. Okay, all right, so let's do a more complicated example. Deal? So let's see. Okay, and then um, let's say you want to use the first derivative test or second derivative test to find all local extrema. Okay, so it doesn't matter which one we're using. The first step is always the same. What is the first step? Find the critical points, right? So to find the critical points, we need the derivative. So what is the derivative? E to the 1 minus x squared. Good. Uh, is it plus or minus? Plus. Okay. Well, then I, I should erase the 2x then. Okay. So plus, plus x times what? 1 minus x squared. And then? Okay. Which is? Negative 2x, right? Okay. Um, so then uh, let's simplify this a little bit. Um, so how about we uh, combine um, the x's? So this is going to be minus 2x squared e to the 1 minus x squared, right? So um, now what should I do? Yeah, factor out of e to the 1 minus x squared. This is common to both, right? So then 1 minus 2x squared on the inside, right? And so that, that's what I want to set equal to 0. <coughs> um, so it's a good idea to, when you're going to use the first or second derivative test, doesn't matter. Uh, since typically when you plug in a number, you're going to want the sign, not necessarily the value. Uh, it's a good idea to have it in factored form because it makes it easier to find the sign, right? If everything's in, if already factored, well then plugging in a number and finding the sign is easier than if you had to plug it in in expanded form and then add everything together and whatnot. So, um, okay, so now if I set this equal to zero, e to the one minus x squared times one minus two x squared equals to zero, and if I solve that, uh, how would I approach this? problem. What should I do? So I set each one equal to zero, right? So e to the one minus x squared equals to zero. So what x value makes that zero? Nothing, right? So never. Okay, so what do I do with it? Forget about it, right? So then do the, do the other one. So one minus two x squared equals to zero. Uh, what should I do there? Uh, okay, so x squared equals to one half. So what is x equal to then? Plus or minus one over root two, right? Okay, so these are my only critical points. All right, now, very important that you ask yourself um, this question. Is my function continuous at one at the critical point. 
because what can happen is um, you can go through all the motions and find, oh, it's increasing here and then it's decreasing. So then that means it must be a maximum, right? But what if it's not even defined there, right? So you always want to have in mind, okay, well, is this value in my domain or is it out of my domain? So just a quick check. So like if you look at this function, it is one over root two and minus one over root two in your domain. When you plug it in, do you have any issues? No, right? So it's so it, it's okay. So so just you know make kind of a note to self. Note to self. F is continuous at critical points. Okay, you'll thank me later. All right. Now what do I do? Are we going to do the first iterative test or second? First. Good choice. Why is that a good choice? Well, if you think about, uh, so this is what I got for the first derivative right here, right? If I imagine getting the second derivative of that, does that look like, eh, it's not really great, right? I mean, we could do it, but it doesn't look like a great looking second derivative. That'll be easy to plug numbers into, right? So um, that's another case where doing the first derivative test is probably best. So what do I do? Make a number line, right? Okay, and then what do I put on my number line? Okay, now I'm going to purposely make a, um, a slight mishap here just to point it out. Okay, you guys ready for this slight mishap? It's something that I see a lot of students do. Okay, what are my test points? Well, what should I use as a test point? Uh, zero is a good one. Okay. What's another good one? If you're not sure, just go far. Minus five. What's another good one? Two. Okay, sure. Okay. Now, does do you guys like the way that looks? I don't like the way that looks. What's wrong with the way that looks? No. So this I see a lot of students do, uh, mainly because you're writing with a pencil. Um, notice how everything is the same color, right? But a bigger problem that everything being in the same color is that can you distinguish if I only look at the right side, which ones are the test points and which ones are the critical points? See how it's difficult to keep track? I just put x in, like on the dash above my critical point. Yeah, so, so it's not confusing. yeah, you want to do some, so that's my point, is that I see students do this a lot where you'll, so you'll put down the critical points and then you'll put down the test points, but you'll, they'll look like the same thing. And so then what starts happening is students do this. One over root two. You start doing things like this, and then what are you going to get here for this first one? Naturally, you're going to get zero. Well, what does that mean? I only know what happens when it's positive or negative. Now I got zero. What does that mean? Well, what happened was I made a mistake, right? And why did I make the mistake? Because, you know, we wrote it down, and we're like, oh, yeah, whatever, and you're just kind of going through the motions, and then it kind of gets all mixed up. So that's why, so if you look at the previous example, this one right here. Notice, um, see how I used, for the critical points, I put just the tick mark, but then the test points, notice I did an arrow. Now, I'm not going to tell you to use an arrow. You can use whatever you want, but make it different, whether you do a different color or you mark it a different way, but you want to make sure that you can always distinguish between the critical points and the test points. Yeah? Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So that was just a little side note there. So let me go back here. Uh, uh, where did it go? Oh my gosh. Oh God. <laughs> 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 
This happened to me last time. Do you guys remember? Okay, so I'm going to plug in negative 5, 0, and 2. Okay, and then again, we're going to plug those into the first derivative, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So if I plug in negative 5, uh, I'm going to get... Uh, okay. So one thing to notice here... Uh, so wait, so I have e to the 1 minus 25, right? Notice that this one is always going to be positive no matter what, right? So you always want to kind of keep that in mind. If you have something that's just always going to be the same sign, uh, you know, you kind of want to just note that so that you don't worry about all kinds of stuff. It kind of helps limit the number of things that you have to worry about at any point in time. So here, okay. So um, is this going to be positive or negative? negative. It's going to be negative, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what does that mean? Nothing. Decreasing right there, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. And then uh, let's see here. If I plug in 0, I get e times 1 minus 2 times 0 squared, which is what? Okay, positive. Now, is it always going to alternate like that? Like plus, minus, plus, minus? No, right? Okay, and then if I plug in 2, what do I get? 1 minus 2 squared. And that's going to be negative. negative. So that means it's decreasing. Okay, um, so then did I find any local extrema? So I'm going to have, so what is this one? Local min. Local min at minus 1 over root 2. Uh, what is y equal to there? How would I find it? Plug it into the original, right? So what would I get? I would get minus 1 over root 2 e to the, what's 1 over root 2 squared? If I plug in. If I plug in one, well, if I plug in minus one over root two there, I get one half, right? What's one minus a half? One half. So it's e to the one half or square root of e, right? That's the local min. And then what about this guy right here? That's the local max, right? So then this would be one over root two and then 1 over root 2 square root of e. All right, so what do you guys think? Is that okay? Not too bad? Yeah? Okay. So you guys want to take a little break? Okay. Oh, let's do a little break.